Hello everyone, Lytro Storm here, and today I am doing What If Dale Survived Part 9. So before you continue, I just want to make sure you're caught up with the series before this. If not, the link is in the description and comment section. But without holding back anymore, let's get into the video now. Starting off Season 10 would be a few months after Season 9. There would be a group at the beach of Oceanside learning how to fight, and Dale would be observing Sam's training with them. Carl is also there to help train up the younger and more inexperienced people as well. In place of Judith telling RJ the story about Rick, Carl would, as he's a good big brother to his younger siblings. When the USSR shuttle crashes, the whole group would start putting out the forest fire, with Dale, Carl, and Sam included. Dale would be working hard to put the fire out, but being in his 70s, he would quickly begin to overwork himself. Carl suggests for him to slow down, but he refuses to until the fire is put out. A walker herd would start pulling up, so the group tries to fight them. Carl tells Dale that he needs to stop once again and rest, so Dale does so while the others kill the walkers. Dale then gets back up and continues putting the fire out right after Carl leaves. He inhales some of the fumes and begins coughing as he starts to sit down. Moving on from that, episode 2, we would see the divide between Beta and Alpha start to grow. This time it's pushed more since Gareth, who was deemed Gamma, knew Alpha's secret, which Beta didn't. He knew that Alpha didn't actually kill Lydia like she says she did because he was there. So Alpha and Gareth would only become closer here, which makes Beta kind of angry. Gareth listens to Beta's conversations with Alpha where he challenges her on why she's being merciful to Francis. He would later go on to join Alpha, Beta, Mary, and Francis when they go out to herd walkers. But after the walkers hear the USSR shuttle in the sky, it unsettles them and makes them start to break rank. Francis quickly takes off her mask and tries to kill Alpha like she did in the show, but Mary is able to throw her sister off. This leads to Francis being eaten by the walkers like she was in the original. This only further goes on to support Beta's argument that sparing her was dumb. She nearly got Alpha herself killed. Back at camp, Alpha is impressed with Mary's ability to kill her own sister, so she gives her a title as the fourth in command. This means that Mary is called Delta instead of Gamma, since Gareth already is Gamma. After that, Alpha and Gareth go away from the pack to talk about Lydia, which Beta ends up finding out about. Beta would quickly get angry at her for this, but Gareth would tell him to back off. Beta makes sure that no one finds out that Lydia is alive, and so the Whisperers plan to attack our group for crossing their border still happens. They send wave after wave of walkers hitting multiple sides. Mary would go to the group to tell them to meet Alpha, with Dale going as well. Meanwhile, Carl helps keep Alexandria secure by helping Aaron's group and defending Negan. Carl and Aaron argue over if Negan should use a crowbar or a stick to fight, but Carl wants him to use the better weapon. It'll help keep them and their community safe by going about killing walkers much faster. So Negan laughs at Aaron while he picks up the crowbar. At a certain point, Carl separates from the two, which leads to the argument they had in the show. When Carl gets back, he sees Negan let Aaron be attacked by walkers and starts charging in to help. Aaron still loses his sight for a while like he did in the show, and Carl would ask what's going on. Negan replies that Aaron was letting him fight walkers alone and brought up some personal business, so he quickly just did the same thing. Aaron clearly hates his guts, so he's not going to risk his own guts to save his. Carl takes the two to a nearby house and tries to help them settle their beef. The three are then forced to work together to kill walkers, so Aaron hates Negan a little less by the end. Anyway, most of the episode plays out like he did in the show, and I also think Dale would try to convince Carol to stop being on watch and stop popping pills, to which she would just ignore those requests. In episode 4, we see Daryl living with Michonne and her family, and we get to see their nice moments with Carl being there too. We'd also see Lydia alone in Alexandria when Sam comes to get her, inviting her to dinner with his family. Of course, now it's just him and Dale, but Lydia hasn't properly had any moments where she got to fully meet Dale yet. She agrees to go to dinner with Sam, so Dale tries to be welcoming to her, inviting her to their family. At the dinner table, Dale also holds back the urge to mess with Sam about potentially having a girlfriend, which kind of embarrasses Sam. In the morning, when the kids start bullying Lydia for her past with the Whisperers, Sam would step up and tell them to knock it off. Lydia would then walk away, and Sam would follow her. Negan approaches the two and tries to talk to them, but Sam is having none of it. He had threatened to kill both himself and his mother in the past, and he's not going to let him mess with Lydia or him. Lydia walks away again, angry at Sam, and he follows, asking what was wrong. She replies, saying that Negan was just trying to talk to them, and that Sam needs to back off. He not only got mad at Negan for talking to her, but also defended her against the kids earlier that day. She can fight her own battles and talk to whoever she wants, but she wants to know why Sam is so dead set on defending her and being angry at Negan. This is when Sam would explain everything that Negan did to him, his mother, Dale, and everyone altogether. He's angry at him for that, as 
he doesn't want her messing with her too. As for him defending her, he also knows what it's like to have someone suppress you like everyone does to her, so he isn't going to stand for it. After hearing this, Lydia would apologize to Sam, and he would tell her that it's alright. Lydia tells Sam that he's a good person, to which he would smile. Later that night, Gage and two goons would attack Lydia, but Sam comes in and starts fighting them off. Negan also charges in with the save like he did in the show, but this time he saves both of them and accidentally kills Margot. When the council begins deciding if Negan is guilty or not, both Sam and Lydia would be able to back Negan up, and say that he didn't do anything wrong. Lydia also would not be so shaken by the attack, since Sam was fighting off her attackers. Dale would go into Negan's cell and thank him for saving his son, and Negan would say that he was welcome. And so now Negan's like, okay, you gonna let me out of the cell? And Dale's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Anyway, Carl and Gabriel interrogate Gage and the other guy, and when they start faking their story, Carl would call them out instantly. This time, when the council votes, it's gonna be open and shut for Negan to live, due to both of the witnesses, and also Carl and Dale being part of the council. Negan would still be freed by Carol, and the rest of the episode would play out the same. Though when Sam finds out Lydia's in the cell, he tries talking to her, but can't make her let herself out. In the next episode, the group would argue about whether they should go looking for Negan or not. Carl and Morales are on the side of looking for him, and Dale currently isn't there to give his opinion. He went to the infirmary, as he had gotten sick, like all the other people and Rosita did in the show. The council ends up deciding on not going after Negan, but Morales heavily disagrees with this. Dale went out of his way to bring him back from the dark place he was in, so he's gonna honor that by doing the same for Negan. During this episode, we'd see Negan and that one guy who liked saviors survive like they do in the original, but we'd also see Morales trying to track them down and bring them back to the group. He ends up running into Negan after he's killed the dude for murdering a woman and her child. Negan asks what he wants, and Morales tells him that he had saved him by letting him join the saviors all that time ago. So now in return, he's gotta save Negan. They would have a disagreement about if people wanted Negan to come back, where Morales would say that it doesn't matter. There are a few people who want him to return, and he's one of them. Negan eventually accepts this, and the two go back on their way. However, at night, they run into some walkers, and Negan has some fun now that he's got a bat again. But as Negan is killing the walkers, Morales would be silently stabbed by Gareth, who was wearing a Whisperer mask. Negan goes to kill the final walker, but his bat is stopped by Beta's hand. He knocks Negan to the ground, and both Beta and Gareth stand above him. Negan calls out for Morales, however he simply sees the body next to him, and that makes him realize that he is kinda screwed. The two take Negan back to the pack, and Alpha orders them to show him the ropes. While Beta would be tough on him still, Gareth wouldn't be as bad. He knows what it's like to be a newbie here, and Negan doesn't seem like a very bad guy. This is the first time they're meeting, after all, so Gareth doesn't really know about any of the stuff he did. Meanwhile, Carol and Daryl are out trying to scout Alpha's herd. They end up capturing one of the Whisperers and return back home. The next episode, Carol takes Lydia out, and Sam decides to follow them since Dale wasn't watching. Carol ends up saving Aaron from Delta, and Lydia gets angry that Carol used her, so Sam makes his presence known. He tries to convince her not to leave, but Lydia refuses to listen. When Sam approaches, she smacks him with Henry's staff like she did to Carol in the show. At this point, Sam is left on the ground, feeling so confused and sad, and Lydia runs away. In Alexandria, Dante and Sadiq have their chat, with Sadiq realizing who Dante is and trying to fight him. But Dante ends up getting a hold of him and tries to kill him. However, that is when Carl enters the room. He sees what's going on and draws a knife on Dante, telling him to put Sadiq down. However, Dante doubts that Carl can kill him with just a knife, so he quickly begins killing Sadiq. At that point, Carl would attempt to stab Dante, only for him to dodge and it be lodged in his shoulder. This gives Dante enough time to finish Sadiq off. The two would then start fighting, but Dante is winning until Carl takes the knife out of his shoulder and stabs it in the side of his chest. This puts Dante down for a while, allowing for Carl to free himself and kick him out cold. He would then take Dante into custody and tell everyone what's up. By the way, Carl and Sadiq have been friends, as Carl was part of the reason Sadiq even came to Alexandria. And now that Carl was a full man, they would have had a nice friendship. So that's why he's in Sadiq's house to check on him. Of course, Carl is going to be devastated that he couldn't save his friend, and would hate himself for not keeping his father's revolver. He had chosen to pass it on to Judith along with his hat, but guns and ammo have been extremely limited, so he wasn't just carrying one around anymore. When Dale finds out about Gabriel killing Dante, he would be pretty upset, but would understand and encourage Gabriel to find his way back to the light. The rest of episode 8 then happens as usual, so that's where we're going to leave off for this part. The next one will cover the second half of season 10, as well as all the extra episodes too, and I think it'll be a very interesting conclusion to this season. But as always, tell me if you liked this part, tell me what you think will happen next, comment your requests for future videos, and subscribe.
Thank you for watching. Have a great day.